rockin', rollin', ridin' out along the bay. Validation and support for autistic people and their loved ones. Hey, I appreciate you watching. You're probably not going to watch much longer, though, <laughs> because I'm at Ryan Kelly, and this is another one of my unmasked, unedited, unplanned, un-everything video. For some reason, there are people that like these videos, I st and I ask them, and they give me answers, but it still doesn't make sense. Anyway, just to be clear, in case you're new, I appreciate you being a part of this community. If you like my videos, you know, you know where to see them. This isn't one of those videos. <laughs> so... I'm an autistic guy, yeah? I always try to validate and support autistic people and their loved ones, but you can't always do that, okay? That's my goal. This is just, I'm not, there's no script. There's no beginning, middle, and end. It's just me talking. Maybe it's an info dump. Maybe it's a rant. What's on my mind right now? I can tell you what's on my mind right now. And, okay, so it's love on the spectrum, but what, just so we're clear, if you don't like love on the spectrum, or you do, or you're sick of hearing about it, Trust me, um, you're, you're still in the right place because it's not about that. What has it done? Now, here's the thing, right? Okay, so Love on the Spectrum is a show that was, what would you say? Um, it was originated in Australia, where I'm from. So it was done in Australia. It was done by a production company. Uh, my recollection is Northern Pictures. And it was also, you know, co-produced, co-funded, whatever, by the ABC in Australia. To be clear, in Australia, the ABC, not like in America, the ABC in Australia is a public broadcast. In other words, a taxpayer-funded broadcaster. Okay. So, you know, they made the show. Season one was just out of nowhere a massive hit. And they did it. Second season. And it was a big hit, of course. And then it stopped. Took a bit of a break. Came back. And suddenly... It's in the US. And from my understanding, from looking at the credits, looking at the producers and the credits, it's the exact same people. So it's the Australian-based production company that are now doing it uh, in conjunction, presumably with Netflix, to make a se two seasons in America. They did season one last year, season two this year. And, and you know, if, like me, if you've probably already seen all the episodes, I think maybe seven uh, on Netflix. So it's out there and pretty much the world's seen it. Why did I just say that? Um, yeah, that's what, that's what, okay. So, what is it? Okay, well, it's a show that follows autistic people finding love. So, it's called Love on the Spectrum. Is it really a show about love? No, it's a show about dating. In fact, it's really got no relevance to, to love. I mean, of course, dating is to find love, but then by the same token, dating, it's as important when you date to not find love, um, because that's the whole point of dating, right? And really, dating's about finding yourself, right, M rather than finding others. But anyway, that's that's a whole other philosophical question. Um, so it's a dating show. That the, the point I'm making is it's a dating show. What other dating shows are there? Let's think about it. Okay, so there's The Bachelor, right? That's worldwide. There's Love Island. That's worldwide. Um, there's other... I, I don't watch these shows so much, so... What else is there? Um, in Australia, we have things like um, MAFS, Married at First Sight, which is another Australian show which has gone global. Um, there's In Australia, there's a show called Farmer Wants a Wife. That's a dating show. There's so many dating shows. And I think Love on the Spectrum is a dating show. It's following people on dates, right? Following people on dates, preparing for dates and after dates. In other words, dating. <laughs> like... Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, anyway, so, okay, so it's a dating show like the rest of them. Okay, great. So what's the premise of it then? Well, the premise of it must just be entertain an audience. And that's cool, no worries. So if it's a, it's a dating show to entertain an audience, great, no worries. Okay, so the issue is, at what what's the cost? Okay, so the cost is, well, it represents autistic people, and therefore that's a, that's a, a game. That's a net gain, right? Because autistic people are being represented on TV and people like to watch autistic people or, or autistic people like to see themselves represented. And that's super important. Autistic representation is super important. Just to have autistic people out there being themselves is super important. Hence why I put hours and hours into videos where I script them and I edit them and I, you know, massage them. And I do my best to try and, I mean, I don't purposely mask, but clearly I'm doing my best to try and, you know, be presentable. And this is not one of those videos. This is the point of these videos. So 
Why did I bring that up? Um, the, yeah, representation. So the net cost, the net, the net gain is you do a dating show with autistic people and that provides autistic representation. And there's no other way of acknowledging that but saying that's right. That's right. Yep. So Love on the Spectrum, Amer Australia and America, provide autistic representation. Autistic people are represented in a TV show, a dating show, and other autistic people can watch it and see, hey, that's me. I'm like them. That's what I experience. They're my challenges. So that's the net gain, clearly. It's a show, presumably acting in good faith, representing autistic people. So this is where it gets complicated. And you know, I'll be honest with you guys, I'll be you know, on the socials, which is not a good place for autistic people, by the way, but on the socials, and this is where I'm really upset, it seems like autistic people are starting to fight or bully or harass or speak over other autistic people based on autistic people having opinions on a show about autistic people. So it's got to the point now where the cost, the net gain is representation, but the cost, the net loss, is in fact harm. Harm and damage. Autistic people are being harmed and damaged as a result of the show. Now, is the cast on the show being harmed or damaged? I don't know. I've personally reached out and direct messaged members of the US cast and they haven't replied. Why is that? Number one, because they've got hundreds of thousands of followers and it'd be in like, you know, presumably like a, what do you call it when you get a message, but it's not someone you've followed already, like a junk or whatever, you know, right? So that's cool. But I've asked the question, but I can't answer that question because I can't, I won't speak on behalf of the cast because I can't tell you what they told me. What I can say is I made it, I made a real point of reaching out to the Australian cast after season one leading into season two. And I actually spoke to various members of the Australian cast. I've done videos on it, right? To the point where it was clear to me that some of the members of the cast that I spoke to, in fact, no cast member of the US, of the Australian version that I spoke to, spoke in glowing terms or said they had a positive experience. They may have enjoyed it or parts of it to some degree, but they clearly had grievances. They clearly felt harm was done in certain situations. Now he's going back over that. You can go watch those videos, right? So I, I do know that some cast members have did find it detrimental or harmful to their own well-being or mental health being on the show. Okay, and, but others, I don't know. I can't tell you. But it doesn't mean that I can't tell you my thoughts and feelings on the premise of the show. So this is, this is the issue. There's been some US um, cast members or ex-cast members who have started to get onto the socials and have started to say, you know, I don't know what all the, what all the fuss is about. They don't do this, they don't do that. I enjoyed it, no one's asked me what I think. Well, that I would if you responded, I'd know, I, I have. Um, but so, so shut up. No. So the answer to that is no, I'm not gonna shut, no, I'm not gonna shut up. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and say the cast members don't like the show or hate the show or think what I think, but I'm gonna say what I think. And just because I'm not on the show doesn't mean I, I can't comment, provide commentary or a review on a show. That's ridiculous. What That doesn't make any sense. That's the whole system of commentary and review. If commentary and review was done only by the people being reviewed or commentated on, there would be no system. That is the system. That's actually how it works. So everyone's entitled to their own commentary and opinions. Everyone. No one's, no one's invalid. But the idea that you, an autistic person would get onto social media and say, no one's asked me or they can't speak on my behalf or you know, they weren't even on the show. What do they have to say? That, how is that not as bad as the people we're trying to educate. Like, isn't that ableist, ableist, right? Do you see what I'm saying? Isn't like, that's saying you don't get to speak. What do you mean I don't get to speak? It's an autistic show, I'm an autistic person. So there's, a, it's, there's been this really strange vibe. Now here's the thing guys, here's the thing. When I did lots of commentary on the Australian series, I got 
lots of attention, right? Lots of attention. And, and frankly, you know, it generated the autistic community were, were all very much of the opinion that the main, the main net gain from the, the Australian version, as within the community, uh, was basically negative, harmful, detrimental to the representation and to the, you know, to the kind of the future perception of autistic people. And that, that's just the feeling it had. And I can tell you after that, here we are again, it's deja vu. See, I've lived through this twice now. I was through this in the Australian version. And now here we are at the end of the second season of the American version, the US version. And I feel like it's the same vibe. It's created this toxic environment between autistic people. And it, there's no net gain anymore. The net gain has been lost. And it's only a net loss of harm. And so the idea that, oh, it didn't harm the participants. Okay, great. No worries. But there are autistic people that it has harmed. It has caused detriment. If not, why, why are all these autistic people on their socials? Like having these weird debates with each other. Well, you know, I agree with that point, but I, can I say that doesn't mean this? Like, it's like, this is not what's supposed to happen. It's not supposed to divide autistic people. It's not, right? it's not supposed to harm autistic people. It's supposed to help autistic people. So the good faith of representing autistic people on a dating show, you know, producing that in good faith, that's no worries. But if it's leading, if it's actually leading to no harm, can you see how that is, if it's actually leading to no harm, you can see how that's, you know, one, one respect. But if it's actually leading to harm after two seasons in Australia, and the producers know that, they got the heat from me especially, I, 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 to the point where I actually, I got a direct one-on-one -on -one phone call with Karina Holden, who in my, from my understanding is, you know, not only executive, an executive producer, you know, a head of a department or whatever. I, I got a phone call with, you know, one of the heads of Northern Pictures and, and one of the heads of the department at the ABC of the time. I got a phone, like, I mean like me and them on a phone call. That's how he, that's how it got to that point, right? So that's, that's, that's pretty clear. I, I want to be clear, guys, because there's a lot of people talking about this, a lot of people, you know, shooting their mouth off. I would, they wouldn't allow me to share the context or the content of the conversation. So they said, yeah, we'll talk to you, Orion, right? And you can tell us what you think and blah, blah, blah. But you can't tell anyone about this conversation, right? You can't tell us what we talked about. So, oh yeah, that's, a, that's, that's not good faith. Now, secondly, I used that probably our conversation to be very open and honest about my clear concerns that I'd already voiced in my videos with the producers. I made it very clear. It was just push back, push back, push back. And everything people talk about now, I told the producers years ago. Like, I don't know, it had to be two, three years ago. I had this, you can talk about it now. Like, oh, when they introduce people, why do they say those two stupid things? Like, you know, they, they like cats and hate loud noises. Like, that's not, who put, that's on your resume? Like, what is that? Who, like, you know, this, welcome, this is James. James likes cats and hates noises. You know what I mean? Like, I told them, what, how is that representing autistic people? How is that helping people understand autistic people? And I gave them reasons of, on how to do it better. It's still happening. And people are still saying, what's the deal with that? It's still happening in the US. Now, my point is, I had this conversation with the bosses. I made it clear. The community online were there. They, they saw it all, right? But here we are, two seasons in to the US version. So you can't say they didn't learn anything because they were given information not from me directly on the phone and from other people. All you can really say is they chose to not turn their mind, to not properly consider genuine feedback from an autistic person on how they can better do it going forward. And then they went forward and produce two new seasons in a new country. Where, I don't know what's happening, but they've done two seasons in Australia, two in the US, what's next? Presumably the UK, right? Is that what's gonna happen next? We're going to the UK now, guys? I mean, I, I don't know, I'm just making it up. We're going to the UK, we're we back to Australia. Well, what's happening next? They tend to have that, you know, two thing pattern. Where, where are we headed to next, right? So, yeah, okay. I don't even know what that, that whole point was. I think the, the whole point was that um, I don't care um, I don't care if people have opinions and I want you to have opinions, but don't shoot other autistic people down for having different opinions. That's ridiculous. And the fact of the matter is, you know, I, I've got skin in this game, okay? I've been talking about this show since episode one of, of the Australian version. And let's be clear, to the point where I've actually been able to talk to, to the, 
producers about my concerns. Clearly, they didn't listen, and I was shot down. And really, they just, and I have my wife as a witness who was on the call, right? As a witness, they 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 disregarded my thoughts. But you know, I, so I've got skin in the game. I put my money where my mouth is. I've actually stood up to the to the the heads and said, "No, this is not right. Here's how you can fix it." And they've gone, "We don't care," and they've moved on, right, to the next thing. So everyone's entitled to an opinion, and it can be different. But you're not going to tell me I can't have an opinion because I wasn't on the show. What, what are you talking about? That, it doesn't make any sense. It's an autistic dating show. So you've heard me in the past talk about the, the difference between documentary and reality. I know this is one of my big high horse rants. So this will be really quick because I don't have time for all these bullcrap rants, high horse rants. You can judge all you want. I don't care. Piss off and watch another video. It doesn't bother me. Whatever. Okay. The, the, what I'm trying to say is, what am I trying to say? Um, my understanding, certainly in the Australian version, you know, the production company um, explained or conveyed to the cast, the autistic cast or the cast in general, right, that it's a documentary. And as a result of it being a documentary, they don't pay the cast, okay? But they could still call on the cast, but they don't pay them. They say, oh, we cover expenses like travel and food, okay? So when you say you cover expenses like travel and food, presumably that means they covered the expenses of traveling to Africa in season two of the US one. Is that right? Anyway, so we cover expenses, but it's documentary. So, okay, so legally there's a loophole there. Now, I know the camera crew, the sound guys, the producers, the idiot that behind the camera talking, you know, like, what does autism mean to you? What are you talking about? What does autism mean to me? What does oxygen mean to you, mate? Like, what do toenails mean to you? What are you talking about? So I've got an autistic brain. What it means is if I take it away, I'm brain dead. What, what, next? Like, seriously, they, they're getting paid, presumably, by Netflix. Okay, so cool. So we're paying everyone. Every bastard on set's getting paid. Just these autistic people. These medically diagnosed disabled people, right, from a minority group, right? So a, 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 a group of autistic people and other castmates that have other forms of disability, right? So a group of a disabled minority, we're just not gonna pay them. But morally it's fine, morally it's fine because that's the law. Hey, we're paying for their food, mate. Seriously, like, you know, hey. I mean, honestly. Okay, so the other argument is, I say, I put it to them, it's a reality show. It's a reality dating show. And I put that to them on the premise that even in the Australian version, I went to the streaming platforms. So back then in the Australian version, it was uh, originally it was um, the ABC and then it went to Netflix. And they all had some form of reality something, reality dating, reality love, some, but it had reality in it, right? Of course, I brought that up. So people go, oh, Ryan, it doesn't. And that's the same on Netflix season, season one and two in the American version. It might have documentary in the credits, but it also has maybe three different types of reality something. Now, this is where people go, Orion, right, what's the difference, mate? Grow up, like, take a breather. You don't get paid either way. Whether you're in a reality show or a documentary, you don't get paid. Like, it's just, that's just the way it is. That's bullshit. You're wrong, mate. You're wrong. Number one, documentaries as a rule are documenting something. So let's be clear what a documentary is. Right. And there's a very clear universal rule in documentary making. Just ask David Attenborough. You don't interfere or intervene with the subjects, right? You don't walk in. You don't see David Attenborough walking in and breaking up a fight between a, a, a lion and a zebra or something. Do you see what I'm saying? There's no break. Oh, hey, you, you get away. That, no. Okay, that's a documentary. And, and as a rule, you know, it doesn't always include uh, humans. It can, but it's not like it, there's, there's like, it's not like there's, say, a handful of, you know, kind of like, stars, right? Their stories are based, it's a documentary, you're documenting things. So a reality show is not that. A reality show is you, you, you find a cast. Who's gonna be on Love Island this year? Who's gonna be on The Bachelor? Who's gonna be on Maths, Married at First Sight? And you cast them, right? Now when I say cast them, what I mean is you actually actively go out and find people who are autistic, who want to date, who want to be on the show, and then who we like. That's why the same people aren't on every year. It's, a, it's actually casting. So you're not going, let's rock up to this dating hall 
Is, does that exist? Let's rock up to this dating hall and just record it. We'll just document it. Doesn't matter who's there. We don't want to know who, who's dating. We just want to document the dating. That's a documentary. What, what a reality TV show is, is well, we're going we're gonna to film them dating, speed dating, right? But we're going to, of course, we're obviously going to know who's going to be there. We're obviously going to cast who's going in. We need the best reactions here, guys. We need the most autistic reactions here. That's not documenting. That's, that's reality TV. That's manipulating. That's intervening. That's scripting. Point two, how many times have you heard in Love on the Spectrum the, the, the dude behind the camera intervene? I don't want to say names because I don't want to embarrass the cast because I have a tremendous respect for them doing what they did. So this isn't about them. This is about the, the show. There was, a, there was a speed dating in season two of the US, right? And there was an autistic dude. Um, he was speed dating. And he's talking to people and he's got his sheet and he's filling out the sheet as they're dating. Why was there not instructions given at the start, by the way? Maybe they do that usually. Maybe they were told not to. I don't know, Right. You're supposed to fill it out when the person leaves, presumably because it doesn't make them feel bad when you write, nope, right? But here's the form, here's the pencil, he's having a chat with them and filling out no, as they're still there. They can see the no, right? Okay, cool, that's documentary. Watching him do that is documentary. So there's, there's the lion and the zebra. And the lion decides, I don't wanna date the zebra, I wanna eat the zebra, right? And they eat the zebra. And then David Attenborough comes in and goes, oh lion, you're not supposed to tell the zebra, you're gonna eat them. You're going to kill them and eat them until they've kind of got away a bit, and then you chase them and you kill them and eat them. That you, you know, David Abra doesn't do that. He just lets the, the lion kill the zebra, regardless, right? But the, the little dude behind the camera is like, do you know that, did, did, did you fill out that form where they were still there? Like, w w did, did you realize you were filling the form out where they were still there? Like, they can see what you're doing. I think you're supposed to do it when they leave kind of thing, right? They've intervened, told the lion, mate, you can't kill the zebra when it's looking at you. You've got to wait till it turns its back, then you can chase it and kill it. You see what I'm saying? That's intervening. And not only was it intervening, it was demeaning. It was demeaning. It, it, the reaction was disproportionate in neurotypical standards, but for me, it was a perfectly fine reaction. It's how I feel. Whenever someone points out I've made a mistake, I, 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 I feel borderline suicidal. Like, I can't do anything right. Like, seriously, how hard is life? I didn't, I didn't mean it. I didn't want to offend them. I didn't realize it. I thought that's what you do. I'm sorry. I didn't realize it. Like, I said, I'll think about it for 10 years. That, that's not documenting. That's intervening. That's reality. Okay, so that's, a re that's the difference, in my opinion, of documenting and reality. That's a goddamn reality dating show. Okay? And you're casting people. Don't tell me you're not casting people. You're casting people. So there's, 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 a, um, there's a cast member from season one. Um, what's her name? Kaylin, I believe. Um, the only reason why I'm saying her name and not others is because um, I, need, I needed to um, explain the story. So... Kaylin is on social media, freely open and honestly on, on uh, Instagram. Um, I don't know if she's on TikTok. I'm not sure. But she's on social media. Um, and before the show launched, I, I watched um, an Instagram reel of hers where she talked about that she's not on season two. Okay. Um, now, you know, I can't, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase, but my understanding, the, the vibe, oh, let's just go with this. The vibe I got, how I interpret it, it's not her words, how I interpret it was that she would have liked to be on season two, but she wasn't able to be. She was told by the producers she wasn't going to be on season two, and they gave her a couple of reasons. And I believe one of the reasons was they said, we're not going out as far as where you live this year. We're staying more central to a particular area of the States. So you're not going to be on the show this year, not because we don't like you, but because we just don't want to travel that far out to your neck of the woods, right? We want to stay here rather than here. And, and so it's a geographical reason why she's not on season two. That's what she, the interpretation I got. Um, and she's like, okay, fair enough. Um, but she did, but then this is the thing. I interpreted what she said was she also, in my opinion, shared thoughts that she thought potentially it wasn't so much about geographics but more so that she made it clear that she had a preference to date neurotypical people in other words my understanding just how i interpreted her on the instagram that she had a preference of of dating not just autistic people so she her preference was to date neurotypical people and she again my interpretation was she expressed a feeling like, so maybe that's not the kind of content they want. Maybe they want people who are more autistic for them, right? More autistic people on dates. 
than me and a neurotypical person. Maybe that's more what they need. And then in the same thing, I'm sure she said something like, turns out though, um, you know, during shooting that season, they were in my area. They, they, and they kind of let me know they were in the area and we, you know, I might've caught up or had photos or done things. And, and so that's interesting. And that was kind of the gist I got from that thing. So it started off at the start of the season, in my opinion, hearing Kaylin kind of talk about, she doesn't, she wanted to be on the show season two, but she wasn't for geographical reasons. But she also thought, I think it was probably potentially could have been based on my preferences for dating. And that not being, you know, in line with what they want for content, which isn't documenting, that's scripting reality TV for the best content. And they passed on me. That's casting. That's casting. And then rock up in her area during that season and, you know, contact her and she gets together. Right? Now, this is where, so where I'm stopping from her. I'm going to me. This is all me now. This is where my brain goes, hmm, I wonder after they saw, you know, they saw those types of comments or heard those types of comments. I wonder if there's any type of, what would you call it? Constructive bullying or passive aggressive hmm, point making. Like you're not on the show because we told you we're not going to come down here, but we're down here just saying, hey, oh yeah, what are you up to? What are you doing? We're your friends, remember? Don't forget that. We're here. We've come down and seen, taken photos with you. We're your friends. So make sure you say nice things about us. Cut to a few weeks later, everyone's binged the season and suddenly she's back on Instagram. And what I found strange was the first few words she said was, I've been summoned. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I've been summoned. Now, if you, so I haven't been summoned to do this. I chose to get up in the morning, have a shower and do this. There's no summoning. Now, she, maybe it was a miss. Maybe she misspoke. Well, who did she? Who summoned her? Other cast members, other autistic people, the producers, the pressure she feels, the, the perceived pressure she feels to stick up for the show. It's strange, but it's in complete contradiction to the last one I saw. I wanted to be in it. They said no. Geographical, but I reckon it's probably my dating preferences. Next thing you know, they wind up in her area. Like, well, what do you mean geographical? No, you're here. What are you talking about? It's, that's casting. That's casting, guys. Do you see what I'm saying? No, we don't want that. Let's pass on the Kaylin girl for season two because she doesn't come across autistic enough, right? And she doesn't date other autistic people. So there's no content in that. This is boring. It's like watching her talk to a normal dude. That, you know, that's, that's, no one wants to watch that. Why? This is the next point, guys. Why? Because the show isn't about documenting real life dating the show in and and this is where people say you know you're wrong the show the word is infantilizing but let's just make it let's just say what it is the show is designed to treat adults as kids that's the best way of putting it okay so put it this way let me ask you this uh, on standard dating shows you know um like the bachelor or love island that's probably a better example or maths or whatever uh, how often during the dating process right during that you know, the process where they're meeting each other and dating, right? Uh, how often do you see them cut to the parents? Right, so if you're watching Love Island and there's two, you know, random people kind of hooking up and then it, what, halfway through their hookup, there's like, there's a, there's a cut to a shot of the mum of those two adults saying what they think. No, w why is that, Orion? Well, that's because the people dating are adults. We don't need to know what they're, they're, Parents think these are adults dating. Why are we asking their parents? It's Love Island. Is like, where'd the, where'd the mum come from? This is Love Island. Who, who let her on? Right? Get the old lady off. You can't have old people on this island. It's Love Island. Right? Maths, The Bachelor, whatever. There's no cut to the parents and get their opinion during dates. What are you talking about? It doesn't make any sense. The only time it ever happens is like the meet the parents period. And that's basically when they've decided they want to be together or something. So, okay, so if that's the case, if that's the case, guys, explain to me how that isn't treating adults like kids. Now, please, because every opinion matters to me. I'm just trying to say, you can't tell me I don't, I don't get an opinion. Don't try to shut me up because you're not going to get to shut me up. And, and that's, and you know, maybe you think it's a bad argument. Good, that's fine. But I don't, I, I actually, I actually don't care about having to accept other people's opinions because they think I'm not allowed to have one. It does infantilize autistic people, that bloody show. 
And, and what does that mean, Orion? Treating adults like kids. I've got a thousand examples. I, 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 I don't need to stop. <laughs> if you've got... At, see, love on the spectrum is adults dating. They're goddamn adults. They're not kids. What are we talking to their parents for? It's bloody stupid. What are you talking about? It's not treating adults like kids. What are you talking about? It's... And... They're adults dating. It's a goddamn dating show. Get the family out of here. Go away. And here's the other thing, right? Okay, so treating adults like kids. Next example. Okay, bring it on, all right? Here we go. Okay, so when the autistic people are being interviewed or talking in their piece to camera, which is just so a documentary, how many times does David Attenborough stop and, and go, um, go, you're just going to ask a few questions to this animal here or to see what he thinks and walk up to the line. Hey, get out. I mean, I know they're an animal, but you see what I'm saying? That, that's, that's not a documentary, is it? So you, when the, uh, you listen, I challenge you to go and watch Watch it on wherever you can find it, right? Watch the scenes where it's like a piece to camera or even just an autistic person in, in the world doing things. And you tell me the music, the music playing with them is the same. Now, this is a challenge, is the same as the music playing when the parents are talking. Because I can tell you, and I'm no music expert, okay? I, but I can tell you, the music playing when the autistic people are talking or doing something, and, and presumably usually it's like, you know, uh, doing something that, that looks awkward or that, you know, something bad or funny happens in, in neurotypical terms. It's the same music you would expect to hear of, uh, let's, what, what would you say? Um, baby animals. Like if there's like baby animals and they're like, you know, like you're just kind of running around the nature and they're falling over and having fun. And it, it's, you know what I mean? It's that kind of, patronizing kind of um, playful, but in a patronizing kind of like, this is, this is, let's watch a baby elephant struggle to walk around, right? And that's the music. Every time an autistic person talks. And then you cut to the parents having an opinion and you listen to the music. Again, I'm not a music expert, but it's not the same goddamn music. The music is very different. The music is, in my opinion, um, in no way kind of like playful or awkward. It's, it, my brain hears things differently, but in my, it's almost dark. It's almost somber. It's, it's kind of, it's got more, um, you know, more body to it. It's like, you know, instead of like, boom, beam, boom, ba, you know, like, 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 you know, here's a, here's a Ryan trying to make a coffee. Beam, boom, boom, ba, he, da, boom, ha, he, ha, hoo. Oh, I think I stirred it too many times. Ba, 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 hoo, ha, right. And then you cut to the parent, right. And they're like, I never, I never thought, I never thought they would ever date. I, I just can't believe they've found someone. It's unbelievable. But the music under them is like, is like, you know, I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. But it's like, I don't know. It's melancholy or kind of. It's not at all the same. And in fact, in a way, it's kind of like the music you would hear if a, if an animal died. So it's kind of like when autistic people are on. Let's treat them like baby animals, right? That's. Adults, like kids, infantilizing. And when the parents are on, let's put music on. I don't know. What, what would you say? What would you say? What would you say? Would call Jim? Oh, yeah. No, let's put music on that makes people feel um, hmm, sorry for them. Yeah, let's put music on that makes them feel sorry for them. Right? It's like, you know, all oh, these poor parents. These poor parents. And then it's such a great moment. They're finally, their son's finally had a date. Oh, it's such a great moment. What are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about by treating adults like kids. Okay? So don't. Don't. Just don't. The, the music, it, it, trust me, that is, the, that is honestly one of the biggest things. People never realize music. Now, you listen to music in shows and trust me, they're, they're doing it to do something. And I personally don't believe um, that someone could, could um, find a legitimate, a legitimate reason why what I've said is not correct. I just don't think the music's the same and I think it's there for a purpose. It's there to make the autistic people look like clumsy, awkward baby animals and to make the parents look like heroes, angels. We should be, you know, we should like be sorry for the hero. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. So, so yeah, take that. Take that. That's what I think about that. And why, why does that upset me? Because people are saying, oh, nothing to see here. Nothing to, any representation is better than none. Nothing to see here. But then if there's nothing to see here, why is the autistic community on fire at the moment? Like, People, there's like autistic content creators are getting bullied in their comments. You know, people are going after people. It's like, you know, you can't talk. What, what's your, who cares about your opinion? You weren't in the show, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, can I say, I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. If you're watching this, 
I'm telling you right now, do not go on to anyone, anyone's social media presence that's been on the show in Australia or America, anyone I've talked about or anyone I haven't talked about, and, and make any comments to them that is even remotely bullying or negative. Because that is not how we treat autistic people, okay? We can all have opinions and they can be different and we respect them. But don't go on there just to give me crap or give them crap. In fact, if you have to give someone crap, give it to me, don't give it to them. I don't want, I don't want to hear about bullying anyone I've talked about or haven't talked about. You want to bully someone, you can give it to me, okay? Because, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, you think I care about what you, what you want to say to me that's bad? Give me a spell, mate. My whole life is people sat treating me like this. Like, it's like, I'm, I'm Teflon champ. Like, so go ahead, but you leave these other people alone. And I'm not joking, by the way. That's just not acceptable. I, oh, and that's the, that's the net gain of representation. I mean, seriously. So, you know, there's these things in my head, and I, I can't get them all together. I'm sorry, and it, I need to stop for a second, just work out where I was. Um, what, what was I saying? Um, in fact, maybe I've gone on long enough. Um, the documentary and the reality and, and um, the harm it's doing and the idea that, you know, you you can't talk about it if you weren't on the show and um you know treating adults like kids and how that is actually happening because i've just showed you how it's actually happening and there's a thousand other reasons um and, and and i think that's it really i just think the overall thing i want to say is you know in my opinion what it's actually doing is it's, it's actually it's actually promoting more ableism right so look at it like this if you're an autistic person and someone's seen the show, has someone treated you in a way that made you feel like, oh man, or uncomfortable or treated you badly and used love on the spectrum as like the reason why they treated you like that? Not think So they weren't trying to be bad, but love on the spectrum was why they said that to you or treated you like that, right? It's actually promoting further ableism. Like, do you see what I'm saying? It's actually, so that's, that's the, you know, whether it's the, it can't be the unintentional cost or the unintentional um, result, by the way, because they've made two series in Australia and I talk to them about this kind of stuff. So it's not unintentional. It's turning a blind eye. It's, it's yeah, they, they, they are willingly and knowingly disregarding that, that thing. And where are, that, where, where are we off to next, right? But that, that's what I mean. It's, oh man, and that's the thing, right? You don't see, you know, like my, my wife, she was watching it and there's a character who, who um, a character, see? That's what I'm talking about. As an autistic person on the, on the US show, who a lot of times will, will do noises that I make, it, and I didn't even realize it. It's like the, oh, oh, oh. that I do that all the time, uh, and my a lot of times I'm like, what 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 happened? What? And I don't even realize I do it. I've probably never once done it on a video. I don't know. I haven't checked. I have probably done it on this video. I don't know. But it's again that watching that character do that on the show is humor. Is it, or if castmates are interviewed and they say something, the audience laugh. They're not stand-up comedians doing a set. Why are you laughing? They're not trying to be funny. Why are you laughing? Unless there's cast members on this show saying, I'm doing humour, why are you laughing watching this show? I, I legitimately, are you, why are there people on TikTok and stuff saying how funny it is or saying how sweet it is, how pure it is? What, so sweet and pure sounds very similar to the kind of expression you'd get from someone who watched a show on puppy dogs or baby animals or children. So pure, so sweet. Oh, they say the funniest things. They say the darndest things, right? Do you see what I mean? So, you know, like, I'm, I'm happy if cast members had a great time. Well done, well done. It's not your fault. You've done nothing wrong, but you were entitled to get paid. And that's the thing I forgot about with the documentary thing. I'll try to explain to you the differences and people go, no, Ryan, it doesn't matter. Bullcrap. People on the shows, whether it's Love, on, whether it's, um, Love Island, you know, or The Bachelor, or, or Maths, it might not be a lot, but I guarantee you they get, they get a weekly wage. Now, the weekly wage might be $1,000. The weekly wage might be $2,000, right? $800. But look, they get a weekly wage. So, and that's in addition to the other stuff, the food and drinks and all that kind of stuff. So, that, so no, that's not, don't tell me, oh, no, no one gets paid in reality. If that's the case, why are there 700 lawsuits at the moment for reality TV stars saying we weren't paid enough? That, not that we weren't paid, it's reality stars saying we were paid for this show like, you know, a thousand bucks a week and it's like a billion dollar show. That's just not fair. We want, we want our share. So that's, that's not true. 
So I'm not saying these people need to be rich. I'm saying these people are on a worldwide dating show that has reality in every goddamn description, pay them their money. Is that is that a thousand dollars a week? Maybe. How many weeks were, were they filmed? Maybe they're only filmed for four weeks, two weeks, three weeks. Okay, they give them a thousand bucks a week for every week they're on it. You see what I'm saying? And, and a lot of these shows too have like prizes at the end or whatever. So, and then you and then you think, oh, but Orion, they're going to get all these lucrative things. These are autistic people, guys. Sure, a couple of them may be able to do talks for money. Maybe a couple of them, but the vast majority will not be able to. What are you talking about? What do you, you, you think? So now you're thinking that this, you know, this group are all just able to just whack on the old camera and do a podcast and a video and all this content creation stuff. It's just not the case. It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's not, that's not true. And by the way, that's in addition, that, that they're entitled to that. And the idea that, oh, let's another thing. Let's say someone, a cast member from season one, got a massive amount of followers because they were just really popular. But they were left out of season two because, you know, in my opinion, they're too popular. Right. That, that doesn't make any sense. That's casting because we know that other cast members are as popular, if not more popular, both in America and Australian versions. And we're, and we're left on to the point where it was really it became about them. Right. I, how would I explain it? Um, in Australia, it was the Michael show. In Australia, it was the Michael show. Michael was the star in season one and season two. That's just factual. It was his show. OK, there were other people that came and gone came and went. Why? America. Who would I say? I want to say the Abbey show. And again, this is not about Michael or Abbey. They're just great autistic people. I'm talking about casting here. Okay, so if it's the Michael and the Abbey show, then again, why are we talking about this being like some sort of documentary where no one is entitled to money? Do you see what I'm saying? It's bloody stupid. Just bloody stupid. <sighs> anyway. It's, yeah. There's probably so much more stuff in my head, but um, I, I've got nothing left. Well done, by the way. Like, well done to the show. Just set the autistic community on fire and walk away with your money. I mean, it's like, seriously. Great stuff. Well done. Everyone's very proud of you.